in three, two, one. In the video that I uploaded last week, I said the following. So there's quite a few things that I want to improve with the version one engine, but the single most annoying thing with this engine is the piston, or more specifically, the piston spring. I just hate this spring. And then when the version two engine didn't work, I said this. And next week's video, I will revert back to the version one piston with the spring and see how well that works. But then just after I uploaded the video, I thought to myself, why on earth am I going backwards? So let me explain a few things using this very dirty whiteboard. These vertical lines represent the cylinder of the engine and the horizontal lines represent the crankcase. Now on the right side of the engine or the front of the engine, there is a bearing. This bearing supports the crankshaft and the conrod is then connected to the crankshaft. Then on the other end of the conrod is the piston. This is a very basic drawing of the cylinder, piston and bottom end of my 3D printed compressed air engine. Now being a compressed air engine, it has to have some kind of compressed air inlet. And previously I've been using a ball valve which acts as a cylinder head. Now if you watch my older videos you'll see exactly how I opened this valve. It was usually done using a pin and a spring which would hold the ball open and sort of adjust the valve timing. And it worked pretty well in my version 1. However, ever since I designed that version 1 engine I've always wanted to build some kind of cam driven valve which is also driven by the crankshaft. Basically a valve that isn't opened by the piston but instead a cam and push rod mechanism that is driven by the crankshaft. Now this type of design is obviously a lot more complex because I'd have to extend the crankshaft, add another support bearing and then some kind of cam and pushrod mechanism to open the ball valve. And even if I can extend the crankshaft, there's no way of getting the pushrod to open the ball valve in the format of engine that it's in currently. Another option is to use a slider valve where a plate with a hole is sandwiched between the bottle lid and the compressed air engine and the pushrod will simply slide this plate up and down until the hole in the plate lines up with a hole in the lid and it lets the air through. Then as the push rod comes down, the holes don't line up and the airflow stops. Now the issue with this design is trying to seal it properly. Essentially, there could be upwards of 100 PSI pushing on the left hand side of that plate. Now depending on the diameter of the hole, the force will obviously vary. However, there'll still need to be some force coming from the right hand side of the plate to keep the seal between the plate and the lid. This becomes an issue when the plate needs to slide up and down because there'll probably be some kind of rubber material between the plate and the lid causing a good seal However, this will also produce a lot of friction, making the plate hard to slide up and down, which I think will just cause too much resistance for the engine to spin efficiently. The only way I can see this slide valve working is if I have some kind of ball valve just in front of the slide valve. This ball valve will hold the pressure into the bottle and prevent it from leaking out when I don't want the engine to run. Therefore, the seal on the slide valve probably wouldn't have to be as good, allowing the friction to be reduced. However, the added complexity of these two valve systems is just a bit of a pain and I don't really want to go ahead with that. So let's go back to the ball valve idea since it doesn't apply as much friction to the system but instead just requires a small impact force to open it. If I were to move the ball valve above the pushrod as shown here it would need a sideways force from the right to open it. Now this is obviously an issue because the pushrod moves vertically and the ball valve has to move horizontally. And I can't think of a way of translating this pushrod vertical movement to a horizontal movement while still keeping a good seal within the engine. So I had to scrap that idea too. But hang on, what if I orientate the ball valve to be vertical, like the version 1, but just offset it from the cylinder so that it can be pushed up by the push rod, allowing the air to flow through and into the cylinder? I think this idea could work. However, I've also had another thought. You see, with this small volume off to the side of the cylinder, any kind of air when the piston is at the highest point in its stroke is wasted air. Therefore, I want this offset volume to be as small as possible, which means compressing the engine in the horizontal axis. Now, the issue with this is that I also have to compress the crankshaft, but I have two quite large bearings in there and I can't really reduce the amount of thread on each bolt to connect the conrod to the crankshaft. So here's my new idea. A regular cylindrical piston has a slot cut out of it for the conrod to pivot inside. This is that slot shown from the top view and then here it is shown from the side view. Now my idea to compressing the crankshaft is to use a square shaped piston. This way the slot that the conrod can pivot inside can be offset from the center. So let me redraw the engine and show you how this is going to work. So here we have the cylinder and on the very right hand side we have a bearing which is going to support the crankshaft and then at the very bottom is just the rest of the crankcase. So here we have the square piston and at the very bottom is the crankshaft. Now with the conrod offset from the center of the piston the crankshaft can be shifted slightly to the right. So when I add the extension to the crankshaft on the other side of the conrod it can sit pretty much directly below the center of the piston. This also allows the secondary support bearing to be shifted slightly to the right, which means the cam on the end of the crankshaft can almost line up with the exterior of the cylinder. So here you can see the pushrod runs pretty much up the external of the cylinder 
and the volume at the very top of the cylinder is quite small. So if this idea works, not only does it increase the efficiency of the engine, but it should also increase the size and the weight of it. So let's get building and see if my idea works. So the version 3 compressed air engine is now ready for testing. The propeller and the piston move nice and smoothly. And if you look on the back side, the uh, cam and push rod seem to work quite nicely as well. You may notice that this looks a bit odd. Uh, it's almost like a cutout section. And that's because I've designed a cover to go over the uh, cam section. However, the tolerances weren't quite right in my dimensions and the head of the bolt rubs on the inside of the cover. So I'm going to leave that off for testing. You may also notice that there's some fibre tape up the top here. Uh, when I designed this part of the cylinder, I forgot to check on my 3D printer slicer, but the wall on the back here is too thin and the slicer uh, just said that the nozzle couldn't fill in that thin wall. So uh, there's a hole at the back. However, it's not under any really high pressure. So that tape should just do the job. Most of the airflow will just be going into the cylinder to push the piston down. So. Uh, yeah, let's give it a test. Let's screw it onto the bottle and give it some pressure. So that's 30 psi. Let's give it a test. Ready, set, go. <laughs> How cool is that? I'm really pleased with that. The uh, the timing of the cam seems to work pretty well for the first attempt. Uh, I'm not really sure whether I need to adjust the timing or not, but the fact it works first try is, is really impressive. And also what I've just noticed is that the bottle is at very low pressure now, I can squeeze the bottle. So that means that this engine uh, seems to run down to quite low pressure. My gauge on my pump uh, doesn't seem to go much below about 15, 10, 15 psi, so it's not very accurate. Um, but I can tell that's that's probably less than like two psi, and the engine was just about running then. So uh, that's probably a good thing. The version one engine never used to run uh, probably below about 20 or 30 psi, so the fact it runs at 30 and lower is a good sign. What I also noticed is that I started the engine with one finger and barely even a hard push so that means that the uh, the cam mechanism opens the valve quite easily which could possibly mean that it will run at much higher pressures than the version one so if I can get this engine to run at a wider pressure range then uh, could be on to a winner let's do it again cover up the window not used to the sun in the UK Increasing the pressure now to 60 psi. You might be able to hear some air leaking, but it's actually from this valve at the back. The engine seems to be perfectly fine. Three, two, one. Really, really, really pleased with that. I still can't believe how well that works. So there we have it, the version three of the compressed air engine, which is fully 3D printed out of PLA plastic. I'm really happy with the way that this runs. I'm sure it needs some tuning. 
the uh, cam or the crankshaft driven cam that pushes the push rod to open the ball valve works really nicely and the fact that it worked first try uh, was well I'm really glad that that happened uh, I'm sure I'm going to have to adjust the angle of phase of when it opens the valve I might delay it slightly I think it might be opening a bit too early uh, so I might just adjust the angle of it and possibly even the shape of the cam to uh, maybe try hold the valve open a bit longer I don't know, these are things I need to test out over the next week or so. I'm really happy with the way that the square piston design turned out as well. Uh, it made it much easier to sand the piston and the cylinder to shape uh, because you're just sanding a flat surface rather than a, a curved uh, cylinder. And also that it allows the whole engine to be compressed a bit uh, because that the first bearing goes here and the second bearing goes underneath the piston. Uh, so it really shortened the length of the engine. So I guess the next step with this engine is to test it under higher pressures, see if the 3D printed lid can handle the load and that the new cam mechanism can still open the ball valve. Uh, and as also mentioned, I need to experiment with different shape and angle of phase uh, cams to see if I can make it a bit more powerful and possibly a bit more efficient, I don't know. But yeah, really happy with that. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. And a huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons. You guys make these weekly videos possible. And uh, if you wish to support me on Patreon, please click this little box up here. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.